Hey everyone, and welcome to our third episode of The Collegian Girls. I'm Imani. And I'm Violet. And we are The Collegian Girls. So we wanted to do something very special before we left for the spring break. And as you all can see, we have a very special guest, Violet. Yeah, so, you know, being a student, it's already hard managing everything that's going on at school and everything outside of school. And our special guest here today, Jade Campos, she is a, the editor-in-chief of the Daily Collegian. So we just thought it would be great to bring her in and just get a little insight of how she managed everything between school, her personal life, and on top of that, a huge role of being the editor-in-chief. So yeah, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I am so excited to be a part of this. I've loved the past two episodes of The Colleen Girls, so it's really exciting to be on this third episode. Um, my name is Jade. I'm a senior majoring in print digital journalism, so I'm also on the cusp of graduation, which feels really, really weird. Um, I am the editor-in-chief of the Daily Collegian, which is, it's, the job is really just a lot, of, a lot of administrative things, just making sure everything is where it needs to be and in its place. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, it feels weird because I have this very big special position that no one else at the university has right now, but I'm a normal student like everybody else. Like, I'm taking, like, 16 credits or something. I'm also like trying to hustle and graduate and figure out like, how am I going to get everything done in time? Like I have a midterm due on Sunday and I'm like, oh my God, like, how am I going to get that finished? <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's kind of what's been going on with me. Like the collegian is just such a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. Well, we are so happy to have you here. And so thank you so much. So we are going to jump into the beginning. So you said your major is print digital journalism. So how did you know that you wanted to pursue this career? Yeah, so I always knew that I really liked writing. I had been like writing stories since I was little, like probably since like the third grade or something. And I would share them with the class. I'd share them with my friends and everything. And so I thought that I wanted to get into like creative writing. Um, but then I realized I wasn't very creative. I like, I can't finish like a story to save my life, like a, like a fictional story. Like I can't come up with anything original or anything that creative. Um, but I knew I really liked writing about people and like real people, um, and talking to real people. And my school didn't really have like a newspaper, like an organization that you could join. Like my high school didn't, um, it was just a class. And I didn't really realize that I wanted to do journalism until I was already a senior. So I didn't get to take the class. Um, but I looked more into it when I was applying for colleges and that's kind of what led me to Penn State too because Penn State has a really good communications program. And so I kind of just fell in love with all of the opportunities here, including like the Daily Collegian and all the other student media outlets here on campus. Um, and so, yeah, it's just like, I really enjoy talking to people and I think like, my experience at the collegian and other internships that I've had has just really affirmed that like it's really scary when you have to put yourself out there and get into the interview and like talk to somebody new and someone you haven't met before but then whenever I leave I'm like okay that wasn't that bad like that was actually kind of nice like it was really fun meeting someone new so yeah that's probably why. So when did you join the daily collegian? I joined my freshman year, um, so it was actually the spring semester of my first year here. I The first thing I did when I got to Penn State was join the blue band because I was in marching band in high school, and that was like always something I wanted to do was like join a marching band in college, and I knew it was a huge time commitment, so I got like really worried about joining too many things at once, so I was like, I am just going to do this for now, and then I'm going to kind of like ease my way into it um, in the second semester. So that's what I did, I joined the Collegian and it was really scary at first, but it's definitely the best thing that I've done since I've gotten here. And I actually like didn't really think about doing it because I wasn't sure that like newspaper writing was what I wanted to do. I was like, it seems too official. Like, I don't know if that's actually what I want. Mm -hmm. And um, Russ Eshelman, who's the, head of the department in the call and journalism 
he was the one who actually was like, I think you should probably join the collegian. And so I was like, okay, like, I guess I'll try it. I don't know if I'll actually like it that much, but it was very life changing. <laughs> so shout out to him. Yes. <laughs> now <we're> here. <laughs> <laughs> and what role did you start off um, as? Yeah. So, yeah. So um, in the first semester, um, everybody's like called a candidate, which pretty much just means like, you're still doing what everyone else is doing. Like you're still writing articles and getting to do assignments, but you're just like in training. So you do um, like training classes, which I needed because I hadn't really done a lot of journalism classes yet. And I didn't really know anything. Um, And so I started out on the news staff um, and I wrote a lot of different kinds of stories. Um, And then I made my way onto um, what's called lifestyle staff now. It was called the art staff then. I was just like a general arts reporter. Um, And then COVID happened and I just became like all of us because just kind of became general news reporters. Um, And we were covering everything going on with COVID. Um, And then I was a lifestyle editor and then the news editor and then I became the editor in chief. So yeah, so I kind of like jumped around between news and lifestyle, but it was a lot of fun. And I have to ask, which one did you like the best? If there was <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I think that both of them have like their perks. And I mean, like I came into Penn State thinking that I really wanted to do more like entertainment reporting, which mm-hmm. is why I wasn't sure if the Daily Collegian was what I wanted to do at all Um, and so it was a really nice transition to be on the art staff and the lifestyle staff to get that kind of like more fun lighthearted content because it's not too heavy and it's not too um, like time consuming I guess you could say like you can really make out of being a lifestyle reporter what you want to and um, it's just always fun like it's always fun on lifestyle but news was it's it it can also be just as fun and lighthearted but if you want to pursue things that are a bit more serious um and so I kind of like started going more in that route just because I realized in some internships that I liked doing more like serious type of coverage um and so I think they both have their perks because they both definitely introduced me to like things that I really like in reporting but also things that I'm not a big fan of like going to like local government meetings is not always the most fun thing. And I learned that through like news reporting. So they definitely gave me a lot of like really good experience and taught me a lot about myself, I think. So yeah, interesting. I mean, me and Imani started at Candace U together at Lifestyle. And I remember you and Becky, you guys were editors. And yeah, we genuinely learned so much like having you guys as the editors. And it was great. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> you guys are always so welcoming, just making us feel like yeah. it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to ask questions. So thank you for that. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so you had like so many different roles at the Daily Collegian, but did you ever see yourself being the editor in chief? I did not. And I. I feel like a lot of people when they come to the collegian at least have this idea of like I want to be an editor one day or like I got here and I'm like I know I want to be the editor-in-chief eventually um and that like never crossed my mind I mean like like I said like I when I got to the collegian I wasn't even sure if like that was what I wanted to do um and then when I was like okay this is pretty good experience I kind of just thought I'd be somebody who um, didn't get super involved and would just pick things up when I wanted to. And um, I was like, I don't know if I'm really going to make that many friends here or if I'm going to be that like part of the crowd or anything. So I kind of just like hung on the back. Um, and then when I got like a couple of internships under my belt, along with like doing the collegian, I was like, I feel like I'm good enough to be an editor, maybe like, I don't know. I'll I don't, I've never thought of it before and I never necessarily was like, that's the goal. But I remember I was on the phone with my boyfriend. I remember exactly where I was. I I had an internship in Pittsburgh at the time and I was walking through Oakland and I was just like, I think I'm gonna apply to be an editor at the Collegian. And he was like, yeah, I think you should do that. I think you'd be good at it. I was like, okay. And it was like a really small, like whatever. And I didn't think it would turn into this because I thought that, you know, there were definitely other people who were more posed to be editor-in-chief in in my year than I was. Um, 
but that first semester, like while you guys were learning a lot and you said you learned a lot from me, I was learning a lot too at the same time. Like there's so much with reporting I didn't know about. And I was learning from people who were like in higher positions than me. Um, and so I only really got the confidence to apply from our previous editor in chief. Her name was Maddie. She like kind of nudged me and was like, I don't know, like, I think you should you know, apply and like, ask me if you have any questions. And that was like, kind of the moment that I was like, oh, well, if Maddie thinks I can do it, then maybe I can actually do it. Cause she was my first editor ever at the Collegian. So I was like, all right, like I've worked with Maddie for a long time. So if she thinks I can do it, then I guess that means I can do it. Right. That was your confirmation. Like, yes, it's (laughs) exactly. Yeah, exactly. So now I have to throw in like a fun little question. So what was your like expectation versus reality? Expectations of being the editor versus like reality? Yeah, I thought that it was going to be a lot harder than it is. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of hard moments and some days are a lot harder than others. Um, But I think that's what scares a lot of people from like being an editor in general and being like the editor in chief. Um, is that they're like oh it's just so much work and like it's a lot of pressure and you have to make all these big decisions and while that's true um, I remember asking Maddie like before she officially left and I took the position I was like like happens if I don't know how like what the right answer is like what happens then like if I don't know what the right thing to do is And she told me, you know, there's not really any right answer. You just kind of know, like, it's just kind of in your gut. And she said, you wouldn't be in this position if we didn't think that you would know what you would need to do. Um, And I don't think I've ever had a moment where I was like, seriously felt like I was really alone and didn't have anybody I could like fall back on to help give me those answers if I didn't have them. Um, So I thought that it would be like, a lot more of this really stressful, like really alone, like you're here and there's no one else to help you. And I thought it would be more like that, but the Collegian just has such an amazing community. And um, I find that like most of my day is just spent talking to people at the Collegian and just getting to know people more and kind of like making sure that they're feeling adjusted and they're feeling comfortable. Um, And so that's really nice. That's not just like, you know, being that big, scary person who has to make a lot of like scary decisions all the time. Right. And now I have another um, (laughs) question about that. So as you are passing your crown to Megan, because she is the, she's going to be fulfilling the position. Do you know how um, Maddie was feeling? Like, do you know what she was, does that make sense? Yeah, I definitely do. Yeah, I definitely do. And I could like, I could feel it from her at the time um, that it was like a lot of joy and a lot of pride because I never got the chance to work alongside Maddie because she was always an editor, but I worked with Megan um, last year as a co-editor with her. Um, So it's like really like nice, like seeing someone that you worked alongside, like stepping in into this really big role and I know like for Maddie it was like here's one of the first people I ever edited suddenly like taking over my position um so it's kind of like a proud mom moment right (laughs) Um, so it, it feels like really uh fulfilling but it's also kind of bittersweet because the year just went by so fast um and I feel like any senior can say that like this year went by so fast um and yeah it's insane and like I've gotten to this point where I feel like the collegian is like my baby and like everybody who works here like I I I care so much about them and I care just so much about like our paper and all of our content and everything that happens with the collegian that it feels like oh my gosh I can't believe my time is already ending like to pass on to somebody else and I know that Maddie definitely felt that way It's, it's hard to let go but it's like, I know that when I do let go, it's going to be okay. So we love that. Yeah. (laughs) So what are some of the responsibilities you have as an editor-in-chief? Yeah. So it's a lot of administrative things. Um, So like, I never really knew what Maddie did when I was just an editor, because it's just, 
there's a lot of random things you do um, and you can't really know until you're in the role. And that's what she would tell me even after I got selected and I was doing training with her. It was like, there's some things that like, I just can't train you on because you just kind of have to get into it and know what it's like. But it's a lot of, you know, answering people's emails about things that like people might have questions about or people might have concerns about with our content. So answering those emails, I like act as like the face of the collegian. So um, I'll go to events and represent us, um, do a lot of recruitment at different events like around campus. So I'll go to the involvement fairs or if there's some kind of talk from the College of Communications, I'll come. Um, and I'll go to meetings as a representative too to kind of share like what's going on with the Daily Collegian, um, with other student leaders in the college and at the university. Um, I work with our business division, so I you know I find out what's going on with them um, through the business manager. Her name's Michaela, um, so we work closely together, and. I do a lot of recruitment. I work with our new members a lot. I run the classes that teach them everything about the about journalism and about the collegian. Um, and I generally just oversee like what everybody's doing. Um, so I make sure that everybody, you know, doing what they need to do and on track and making sure that what's getting done, what needs to get done is getting done. But um, since we do have like a pretty good like tier of like you know, I'm the editor in chief, but we have editors for all of our staff. So like there's mm -hmm. new staff editors and lifestyle staff editors, um, just making sure like they know um, what needs to be done, but they also have their own like idea of how they want to be a leader and how they want to want their staffs to um, go in whatever direction. So um, it's really interesting, like all the different leadership styles coming together, but it's nice like being the person that kind of gets to see it all happen because when I was a lifestyle editor or a news editor, I didn't, I knew what was happening with my staff, but I didn't know as well what was going on with everybody else. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> that sounds so great, but like, how do you do it? How do you do it? Because you still you have all these responsibilities as the editor in chief, but then you also have like to do school, you have to study, we're seniors, so I know you're applying for jobs and like stressing about that. It's also like, how do you like keep your head on straight without, mm -hmm. you know, falling down, <laughs> falling over? Yes, yes, it's kind of ridiculous. And I feel like sometimes like, I'm sure that a lot of people who are seniors right now and juggling so many things, like whether it's like an organization or classwork or a job or something, it's like, if you think too much about it, then you kind of feel like, whoa, like, I don't know how I'm doing this right now. Um, but I think I've always been really good at time management. Like I love, I know in the first episode, you guys were talking about planners. I love using a planner. I love my planner. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love my planner yes. and I color code it too. It's so good. Um, okay. Yeah. So like at the beginning of the week, I kind of just look at like, okay, like, what is everything that's going to happen this week? And my schoolwork stays pretty much the same. Like, um, at least for my classes, we have like weekly assignments that we'll always have to do. So I've kind of gotten into a groove of like, okay, like I'm going to start it this day and then I'll finish it this day. Um, and so I, I kind of spend the first half of my day just focusing on the collegian and doing collegian work. Like I'll hop on my laptop and open up my email and see if, um, like there's anything that I need to answer that came in overnight or if people have questions or I'll kind of like look through to see if any breaking news happened that we need to pop on. Um, and then I just spend the day like talking to people and kind of like intermittently getting homework done throughout it. So it's kind of just like waking up in the morning and thinking about like my schedule and with in, in between classes, like what do I have time for? Um, and what's interesting about my job is that I think out of everybody at the Collegian, it's the one that you just can't really plan for. Like, I know that there's stuff I'm going to have to do every week. Like there's meetings that I have to go to every week, but a lot of things just like happen and you can't really plan for it to happen and that I'm going to have to like deal with whatever's happening next. Um, so it's kind of just like knowing what needs to take priority. Um in terms of my schoolwork, especially, because a lot of the times at this point, I've really like put priority on the collegian over like everything else going on in my life. Um, and so when, by the time I get to my homework, it's like, okay, 
what's the first thing that's due? I'm right. Gonna start yeah. on that. <laughs> I'm going to start working on that. Um, but I do try my best. Like if I have any like slivers of free time throughout the day, like, okay, I'm, I'm going to start working on my homework um, and try to start getting that done. And we're in the office all the time and there's so many people to talk to, but I make sure that I get out and go to the library because that's like a quiet space. And I'm like, okay, I need to force myself to do homework. I can't do collegiate work while I'm at the library. (laughs) Right. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned time management and the planner because you're like, actually, (laughs) yeah, this is a great example of how those things we talked about actually works. Yeah. Yeah, Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm so happy you said the planner because that really gets my I know jumping because yeah. I love, we love planner. planners. <laughs> I wish I had a planner with me right now. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. So, much. <laughs> it's really same. Same. so what are some of like your biggest um like accomplishments as an editor in chief? I feel like I have so many. Like it's so weird. Like, like I said, because it feels like the year went by so fast. And so I'm kind of like, wow, like you kind of wonder, like, did I really do anything that I wanted to do? Like, did I get enough done um, as the year's wrapping up? But as I take a look back, I feel like I've accomplished a lot of really great things that I'm really proud of. Um, Like, for example, we've recruited so many really awesome reporters this year. Um, In the fall semester, we had almost actually over 80 people apply. And that's well more than any other, like, semester I've ever been at the Collegian um, has applied um, for staff. So that was really awesome just to know that like I was getting our name out there enough Mm -hmm. to have like to be able to bring people in. And I know that that's definitely due in part to all the reporters and staff that work here too, because they say a lot of really great things about the Collegian to their friends and everyone that they know. Um, So that was really great. Our multimedia staff, which is our newest staff here at the Collegian, um, which helps handle podcasting and everything on our YouTube channel. Um, I feel like it's really not an accomplishment of my own, um, but like it's just been really awesome seeing um, all of the great work that our multi staff has been doing, which has been led by our multi editors, Ben and Sophia, because um our YouTube channel has grown a lot and um all of our digital channels have grown a lot like all of our social media platforms which is like a huge shout out to Andrew who's our digital managing editor too um so I think everybody's just kind of found their groove and like what works and like knowing what to make a priority in terms of the work that we're doing which is really great and that's helped us grow our audience um and then one of the last things one of the really really big things that I'm really proud of is um we were selected very specially to participate in this thing called the College Media Project um, through the Pointer Institute. And only five other schools, five, five other universities were selected to participate. You had to submit a project idea. Um, and this past year in November was the 10 year anniversary of the Sandusky case. Um, and so on a whim, like it was, probably one of the first things I ever did when I was editor-in-chief was to submit an application for this because um, the dean of the college just sent it over to us and was like, hey, this might be interesting. And I think I submitted it like 10 minutes before it was due because I forgot about it. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I need to submit this. And so I didn't really think anything was going to happen, but I was on vacation in May. And then I got a call from Pointer and they were like, do you want to be a part of the project? Um, which was just so exciting and um, yeah it was awesome and we received a grant like all of the other schools who did Uh, we got like professional training from the Pointer Institute and um, over the like a series of months probably like six months all of our staff members were reporting and researching and put together like this awesome package on everything that went happened and everything that happened with the Sandusky case so um that's one of the like really big things that I look back on and I'm like that that that's just awesome that we were able to do that this year that's amazing and no one would have known that you did you did the application 10 minutes (laughs) exactly I just kind of know that you did that (laughs) exactly yeah, I kind of outed myself, but like, I, I remember I was like, it was like midnight and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> right, but you did that, okay. Mm-hmm. 
Now with accomplishments does come challenges as well. So what are some of your um, biggest challenges being the editor in chief? Yeah, it's definitely like, um, because I'm still a student, like I said um, before, and it's not just like knowing like, oh man, like the collegians, it feels like a full-time job, but I still have classes to do. So um, staying on top of that, like time management that I've always had and, um, along with senioritis. I didn't think I really got senioritis when I was in high school, but I really have been feeling it now. So dealing with that, but also just like, I am still a student and everyone else at the Collegian is a student, but um, I'm, I'm everyone's boss. And, you know, we see ourselves as a pretty professional work environment. Like we like to have fun, but uh, we want to set people up to be able to go out and get jobs in the real world and feel prepared for that. Um, so I'm, I'm like everybody's boss. And sometimes that can feel a little weird because it's like, oh, everyone's like my, the same age as me and my peer. Um, but I still have to have this like professional level. And that's how it is with all of our editors too. And I'm sure that everyone can agree and says, we'll say the same thing that um, sometimes that can feel like kind of weird. Like, you know, I'm still learning and I'm still like the same age as you. I'm in the same position as you in college and everything. But um everyone will look to me for the decisions and that's what I was kind of scared of when I got into the position but um everyone here like has each other's backs and I have gotten a lot of help from both of my managing editors Becky and Andrew and they've been great um so it doesn't feel like as lonely as I was worried it would like I said before but sometimes it can just feel a little weird like I'm also a student but I'm also your boss right <laughs> Now, yeah. did you feel like any, um, like it was going to be a little con conflict, like, oh, they might not listen to me because we're the same age? Did you ever feel like that? I don't know. Um, I mean, I think that definitely was always in the back of my mind. And I feel like that's how it is whenever anyone steps into an editing position. And it's mm -hmm. always hard when you um, first make your way in, especially when you work along, you worked alongside everyone that you're now an editor of as a reporter. So um, that first semester as an editor in the fall when I was a lifestyle editor was really weird. I think that was the biggest transition. Um, and that was mostly because it was like, I was working with all of you guys before and now I'm your boss and now you have to listen to me. And for some, some people, um, you know, they will try out editing and then they decide it's not really for me. Um, and so that felt really weird. Like now you used to be my editor and now I'm your editor. Um, but I think there's a lot of like really awesome understanding that people have that comes with these roles and comes with the positions. Like I know you're my boss and I expect you to, um, you know, delegate tasks to me and, um, make sure that I'm staying on top of the things I need to. And having those two semesters as like lifestyle and news editor really helped me, I think, establish that rapport with everybody. Um, but what's nice is that like, I, like I said, I do my best to talk to everybody on a daily basis so that they know at the same time, like, yeah, I'm like the boss, but I still wanna be everybody's friend and I still like care about you. And I still wanna know you on a personal basis too. Like it's all, it's all love. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I always had good experience with all of all our editors, you know, they're always like helpful if anything. Good. So, yeah, doing great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes, every great. Yeah. <laughs> so one last question. I just realized while talking to you that you're not only just a student and the editor in chief, but you also have like internship and like blue band and everything. So that's really impressive. So like, do you want to give any advice to students that are gonna have as much like a, a different roles like you do or seniors who already have that many roles? Like, do you want to give like one advice? Yeah, I mean, the big thing I think is that um, every time I'm like talking to people who are like going into college or like maybe have questions just about college in general, it's just like, really don't forget about the things that you care about that don't necessarily have to do with your future career path or like 
professional life or anything like that because I think that's what keeps you sane honestly um because every like blue band was very time consuming but everybody would um always like say like when are you gonna leave like when are you gonna stop doing it because you have journalism stuff to do you have like clubs to join you have classes to focus on and I was like I like this like this is my free time like this is my hobby like when I go here like I think you guys think it's like work but like yeah it's stressful sometimes but like it's fun like it's my free time um and I don't think that you could do as many things like being in big position or you know taking a lot of classes or doing internships without making sure you have time in your day to focus on yourself and to have those fun things in your life and those fun outlets so like don't think college and life just has to be about work and stress because I think I thought that for a while and it just made everything so much more anxiety inducing and stressful and so when I finally was like okay there needs to be a cutoff in the day where I stop working and I need to just like focus on me um that like my life just became so much more calm. (laughs) Yeah, and I'm so happy you said that because people really forget that you do need time for yourself. Like, yeah, we could, the work is going to be there, (laughs) but we have to take care of ourselves. So I'm really happy you said that. And I'm happy that you haven't, have something that you do to just have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And thank you so much for joining. That was yeah. Our last question. We are so happy that you found time or just had time to come on our podcast, The Collegiate Girls. Of course. <laughs> yes, I was so excited to do this. So I'm really glad I could. Yeah, thank you so much. This was genuinely great. Yeah. So great. Fun. And I awesome. love to hear you talk about it all. <laughs> I'm glad. All right. So I'm Imani. And I'm Violet. And I'm Jade. And we are the Collegian Girls. 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 (laughs) We'll we'll see you in our next episode, guys. (laughs) And thank you, Jade. Yes, of course. It was so much fun. (laughs)